Because we're live. Hi. Welcome back. Yeah. Weird. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so no idea where this came from, but <clears throat> have you guys been? It's been two weeks. Yeah. 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 Did anyone do the Barbenheimer? Nope. No, I'm not going to see Oppenheimer, but uh, I think we are going to go see Barbie. Same. When Reese gets home, we're probably going to go watch Barbie next week. Yeah. I wanted to. We We really wanted to, but I was visiting my mom in BC where there was no movie theaters. Sure. Um, so we are doing it th Saturday. I'm going to do double feature them both. Get dinner with our friends in between. We got a whole group. Paul, you dressing up? No. <laughs> John? I might wear a pink shirt. That's yeah, probably I'm, about I'm, it. I'm wearing like all pink to both movies. Mm -hmm. You got pink pants? I have pink shorts. Okay. They're like a, they're like a salmon color. Okay. They're a little right. more yeah. muted. But I do have a pink shirt. I have red shoes. So... Okay. You know, close enough, and then oh, and then I have a I light. I didn't think you were going to go that far. I, I'm a little impressed with this. I was well, expecting I, I, it. I have it. Why not? Yeah, I guess. Everyone, everyone else is doing it. Yeah. True. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that for sure. All oh, why not uh, Oppenheimer? Oh, because it seems long and dry and probably bad. Honestly. Okay. The reviews are pretty good. They're both both of the movies are getting great reviews. I'm sure I'll see Oppenheimer when it's like at home or whatever. The, so the thing that almost got me to Oppenheimer was we have one of the few theaters in the world that can do the full like 75 millimeter uh, screening of it or whatever in Chinook. And I think it's 70, but OK. Yeah, 70. And um, apparently their first showing, everything was desynced and it messed up and it's been down ever since. So they've had to give everybody for that first showing double refunds like two vouchers each or whatever for future movies and just because of the price that they paid for an IMAX. I'm guessing so. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. canceled every other showing of it. So Jeez. when I saw that, I was like, okay, well fuck it then I guess. Cause that's probably the way I would have gone to see this since it's kind of novel or whatever, but oh, okay, well, it is what it is. I think I was hearing down here in the States, if you did do the 70 millimeter to show up exactly on time because the spool is so big, yeah. they can't fit trailers on it. Yes. Oh, wow. True. It just starts start the movie right away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Since it's three hours long. And apparently that also makes it a bitch to fix uh, any problems with, which is apparently why they canceled it here. <laughs> I, I would assume it's a bitch to fix any actual film or anything at this point. Like, oh yeah, because everything is digital, right? They usually probably yeah. Just I have play to imagine file. everything. If something breaks, they're like, "Well, we'll see what else is dusty in the back that we can like <laughs> duct tape together and and cross our fingers." But this thing yeah. is so old. I don't oh, know what you sure. expect. Yeah, it's kind of too. Like bad, it reminds though. me of um. It makes me think of like the last blockbuster when I watched the the Netflix documentary and how they talked about anytime their cash registers go down because they're using like original cash registers, yeah. they have to like go in the back to other broken cash registers and try and like jerry rig them together oh. that other blockbusters that have closed sent to them in the hopes of like maybe this will be useful to you one day. Right. Yeah. That's that's wild. That's so crazy. Speaking of um like weird movie showings. I, I went to a showing of past lives three, four weeks ago. Mm. And as the trailers were going, we noticed it was out of focus. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's um, weird. So I got up and I just went to like the front and I was like, can you t mention someone? Like, I think the, I think this theater is out of focus and they came and fixed it. Yeah. I don't even know how you get to that point though. Like, why would yeah. you ever change the focus? But I, what do I know? Might've been someone struck it. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. And then the movie started and the lights didn't go out. Mm. So someone had to get up and go outside again and find someone. Can you turn the lights off? <laughs> Man. Yeah. Theaters. Cinema. 
John, you did some pinball stuff. Do you want to talk about that? Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, sorry. Went. That was this past week. Oh, yeah, nice. I went. Okay, cool. So I, I went only for Sunday. Me and my buddy Mike did a day trip. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Edmonton, the, right? the Edmonton Pinball and Arcade Expo. It was a four-day event up in Edmonton. Uh, we only ended up going for Sunday, and uh, that was way better than I expected. It had like 100-plus pinball tables, like so many there. Uh, a bunch of random arcade games. They had a bunch of tables for sale if you wanted to buy stuff, and they were doing discounts on the newer stuff, like Toy Story 4 and like Dr. No and Halloween and all that stuff. Uh, they were running tournaments for like amateur, professional, men's and women's. Like uh, it was like legitimately impressive. It was two like hockey rinks combined into like wow. just covered in pinball tables. It was wild. That's cool. That's extremely Canada. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. Why would you need to separate men and women? Like, is like does strength come into play when you're doing pinball? It can for tilting. I guess. Oh, just... weird. Yeah. But like, I guess. but like, also, I think they just mainly did it for like, here's just like a separate league, just to get more people interested. Okay. It's like I understand in sports with like different testosterone levels, but when it's more like. I don't know, hand-eye coordination? It's like, what? what's the difference there? Yeah, I would assume it has something to do with either they just wanted to do different tables or, like, maybe it was a case of just tilt sensors or stuff like that, which require different settings. Like, maybe it was easier for a guy to set off by accident. Okay. Hmm. Maybe, sure. But no, we, uh, we went... Table? Oh, God, that we played there? The Wheel of Fortune one was actually really good. It was like from like 2007 or 8, and it, they literally had Pat Sajak and Vanna White record a bunch of lines with a bunch of fake contestants. And they were like, answer nice. like, just like, oh, so where are you from? Like those kind of questions as you're playing the pinball table. And uh, you would solve puzzles by hitting the contestants to make them guess letters. And like you would spin the wheel for bonus points and stuff like that. That one was pretty fun. Uh, Last Action Hero was also super neat. Uh, based off the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Uh, what else did we play? There were so many Data East ones. The Batman one was actually kind of cool. The Tim Burton one. Did they have any uh, of the like modern day, like super new ones that I hear yeah. about from time to time? Yeah, they, like they had the Ninja Turtles one I have here. Uh, they had uh, the brand new tables that dropped recently for James Bond, Toy Story 4, okay. Halloween, uh, Alien and Aliens. I don't remember what else was there. They just had like a, a row of those. So yeah, could like they had a it, bunch of new stuff. Could you see actually going four days? Is there enough to do? If you like pinball a lot and <laughs> or you enter the tournaments, absolutely. If you don't, uh, I was good after one day. Yeah. Did you do it, any tournaments? No, because like okay. I'm not that good at pinball uh, compared to them. And uh, it would have taken up basically the ent entirety of the day. Right. Because the way they had it work is they had a bank of like 10 machines and you had to post scores on every machine. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so that was like your qualifier. And then if you made it to the next round, you did it again on a smaller bank of machines, and then you just kept doing that until you got to the actual finals, which were streamed, and they were on stage, and just cool. like stuff like that. So there were a couple of machines that they had on in the tournament area that I wanted to play that they could that was nowhere else. Like they had the Stargate pinball table. So that made me sad I couldn't try that out, but like almost everything else was everywhere. They had duplicates of a bunch of tables. There was actually one really cool pinball table I forgot to mention. Uh, it was like NBA, not Hang Time, but a similar name, like uh, Showdown or something like that. It was a head-to-head -head pinball table where you each have your own separate actual table, but they're like wirelessly connected together. And the point is that you need to keep scoring baskets as if it was a basketball game while playing pinball versus your opponent mm -hmm. who picks like a different team, so... You could do three pointers by doing like the longer like ramps and shots. You could just do straight shots for two. Like you could do bonus shots and like bonus points for like food combos and stuff like that. It was really cool. Oh, so you're not actually like Im impacting their board in any way. It's just no, who scored it's just more it's just a race. Yeah, a head to head okay. race. Because that would be cool if it's like you hit a certain switch and it like puts up a block on their side or something. I, I don't know if it does do that, but we never experienced that the one game we played on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, basketball, that would make no sense, but maybe in a different scenario, maybe there's a pinball table that does that. Yeah. Cool. No, well, there was so much cool stuff there. Yeah. Nice. Did you, is, did you like buy stuff? Was there stuff to buy? 
Uh, I mean, all the stuff they had for the sale was like, yeah, like their shirts with their logos and stuff like that. Um, they had pinball parts if you needed any new parts for a machine, and oh, they okay. were selling tables, but uh, I did not have the room or the money for a new table. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. An arcade cabinet seems like a lot, but a pinball table, it's like the maintenance. I can't even imagine. Mm, I mean, I've been lucky. The new table I got, like the Ninja Turtles one, is fine, as long as I don't like do anything rough to it. But like moving around whenever we move out of this house is going to be it's going to be interesting to see how the setup is after that. Well, have you had to repair anything in it? No, but I've had a couple okay. things that have thrown errors when I boot them up. So uh, it's a case of like, oh, I hope this isn't a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who set it up says like, yeah, no, that's nothing. Don't worry about it. But OK. Cool. Uh, well, let's talk about some video games because this is the top down perspective for July 27th. I'm Sean Booker. I'm Paul Fleck. I'm John Wheeler. Paul, what have you been playing? All right, we'll start off with uh, Viewfinder. Viewfinder came out, and uh, it looks like you and I both played that. So, Yes, I, uh, I finished it. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I think that game rules. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about this game for a second. I think that mechanic is amazing. I think that game is too short, and it never does anything f really too interesting with a cool mechanic. It doesn't push that mechanic far enough for me, I think. It's, is this oh, the I, game where you take pictures and then like it yes. affects the world around you? Okay, yeah. that looked awesome from the. Trailers. But I will also say it's very so, good. To respond to Paul, I think I'm. I disagree. I'm. I'm in the opposite boat there. I love how short it is. I feel like it does push the mechanics, and I love that because they could easily have just like doubled the number of levels, and it's like, well, we're just kind of doing the same thing over and over for this extra. Like I feel like doing more might have been kind of padding it out. I think they did push a lot of stuff. No, I disagree um, then, completely. I think that mechanic could have... At, the fact that that mechanic is so open and works so well, I think they could have made this game extremely long and, like, made some actually challenging levels. I think it's too easy, except for, like, two or three optional stages at the end, which I thought were the best part of that game. Um, And then just to, to respond to John briefly, it starts out as a, like, put a picture up there, they go pretty wild yeah, they with do. some of the extra mechanics later on. And I, I think they kind of do the Nintendo thing. of it. They don't overstay in their welcome. They do a cool mechanic in this one area, and then you move on. Brand new mechanic that's kind of thematically similar, yeah. but it's, it'll make you think completely differently. Like, there's a, there's a lot of... There's, there's some specific moments that stick out into my head as like, oh, this was a really cool, like, I did not expect this to happen when I when I put that thing down. Um. And I think they they evolve and they they go like really nicely. And I, I love it's like four hours. I love that length. Nothing I feel like overstays as welcome. Sure. Uh, cool. Yeah, it, I guess like it starts off pretty simple with you don't really control any of it. You, you were given the pictures that you can use. So it's a little more like there is an intended solution for this that they kind of have for you because they give you the thing to do it. But then at some point it gives you a camera where you can take the pictures and then like apply the, that however you want or whatever. And it completely opens up that way. Yeah. Yeah. I want to watch a speed run of it. I didn't get to yet because I think that's probably going to be just nuts what you could do. Oh, I'm sure. I was even hearing um, some other podcasts talking about some comments the developers made where they were seeing some speed run stuff. Yeah. And whatnot like i i don't think we should mention almost like any of the mechanics it's really hard to like yeah it's one of those things that i think you should go in and it's weird though too because like i told you the, all of the mechanics already but how they implement them and how you use them later on is kind of it's kind of cool and novel what they've done what they do with that simple idea of you take a picture and you can like imprint that picture on the world that's that's not all the mechanics there's definitely other stuff that they twist around how things react to stuff so there's there's a lot to be said outside of you take a picture and put it down i think is there um i'm trying to think of what else they do then there's like i i don't wanna, like we can yeah. talk after because i i really think if if you're a fan of portal if you're a fan of the yeah, witness if you're a fan of those Super are all liminal, taking, yeah yeah true then this game is for you and like don't look up a trailer because 
I think there's a lot of wow factors in this that are really worth not having it spoiled for yourself. There is a demo too, uh, to if you want to take a look and download. And I think that gives you a pretty good cross section of I think it's two stages or something like it's not long of uh, what you can okay. expect. I'm assuming that's the demo I played back at Summer Game Fest. Yeah, um, probably. I which I uh, there like it goes so much further and there was a bunch of yeah. stuff in that in the main game in between those stages that they had taken out of the demo where I was like, yeah. oh, this like. Again, I don't want to spoil it, but uh -huh. like, oh, this whole like narrative thing wasn't even in there. Like, this is new to me because I was a little kind of bummed. Like, OK, I'll just like get through the stuff that I already played through. And it was like, wait, this is this is different. They definitely made like a a bespoke demo almost. It's not it's not extra stages, any, um, but no, it, it is isn't. a little different than the game. Yeah, they kind of I think the demo starts you off right away with like the camera, too. So it may be. Oh, really? Then yeah. OK, that it's not the. Oh, really? It's not the Summer Game Fest. The Summer Game okay. Fest one didn't. I don't think you even got the camera. Oh, OK. Yeah, the demo that is up right now that you can try uh, definitely has at least one stage with the camera. That's kind of late in the game and kind of like. Almost, it's, I think it's World 2, isn't it? it? It is, but the stage that they set you in is like one of the later ones where you kind of have to understand how to use negative space in like. Oh, and okay. it, which seems kind of like a more advanced thing that you <laughs> seems weird for a demo, but it was cool. It's a cool thing. I think I think this game does the, does the really smart thing of puzzle games where when you figure out a solution, it, you can see like, I, I don't know if this is what the developers intended for me to do. Yeah, but it worked. There's a and, lot of that. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's very kind of, you know, Zelda Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom of like. I don't know if this is what it was supposed to happen, but I lined eight logs up in a row and ran to the top of this tower and it worked. So I'm yep. moving on. Yep. Um, and there is definitely a lot of those things in this, which I think that's like the mark of like a great puzzle game. Also, it uh, it's smart that they I don't know how else you would do it, but they have like this rewind mechanic because because it's so open you can actually just like destroy your way out of a level and it'll be like, yeah. yo, you oh. just destroyed your teleporter. So you got to reward. And you'll do it all the time without even realizing. <laughs> yeah. All the time. And it's just like, oh shit. Cause I, cause I was looking at some of the achievements and I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to like do that one on purpose. Yeah. And then like 20 minutes later, I'm just doing it constantly. And it's like, okay, I didn't need to like waste my time and go out of the way to do that one. Yeah. And there's, I think the rewind also leads you to uh, experiment more than you would necessarily otherwise sure. which is a big part of it too there's a lot of finessing in some of them too where it's just like okay i think i have the right idea i just got to make sure i don't like destroy this other platform when i do it okay this is i just need to like rotate 10 degrees a little bit. yeah exactly yeah. And, and the rewind is really nice because if you double tap it it'll go back to the last like significant action you did yeah as opposed to just having to hold it and like watch it scan back so that's that's like really helpful and whatnot. Yeah, it's very it's very well thought out in that way. Uh, and yeah, I guess just like to round it out, it does kind of have a narrative aspect to it that I don't really think they go really too far with. And I think is whatever. I don't care about that at all. I'm here for the puzzles. So and it makes good on that. So it doesn't matter, really. Um, it's kind of a yeah, I mean, I... narrative hook of why you're in this world, which was kind of cool, I guess. But other than that, I didn't care. Yeah, I, I kind of liked the amount was there because it didn't just feel like like a cold like grid of yeah. puzzles one go 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 through them. Uh, but it does definitely does not go in the way, and a lot of the time you can even just not engage. Like you don't have to pick up the phone. Yeah, they really don't want to. And it's all done through like gramophones of like audio logs. audio audio. Yeah. yeah, so you could just not do any of that if you want to. I did listen to all of them that I saw because <laughs> why why wouldn't I? I guess, but. You could just not engage with that if you wanted to also. Well, it's also just easy enough to like turn on the audio log and then start l walking through the level. Yeah, because it it'll play. It'll play while yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's super cool. It's I, I, I really recommend it. And again, if, if you are interested, if you've made the decision, I want to play it. Don't look anything up because you are just going to like diminish it, your your enjoyment if you know the, the fun surprises. Oh, and it does the thing that I love that boss fights do at the very end where it kind of like tests how much you know of these mechanics and how to utilize them in like a weird sure. time trial almost type way which yeah, I thought was cool that one was 
interesting. So I ended up having to do it three times, I me think. Me too, yeah. <laughs> and, and it started giving me hints of like, hey, you can take things from one part to the next. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was just like bulk taking extra photos because it's like, I think I'm going to need this device. Like, so I'll just bring a couple of those so I can spawn a few of those later on. And then I don't even have to worry about that, you know, forthcoming stage. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's hard to talk about without spoiling stuff, but it's very cool because I, I just like how it tested, like your knowledge of what you've gone through throughout, throughout the whole game and one giant thing. And it felt yeah. really and it was kind of difficult, which is also what I liked as well. Like I had to do it a couple times and it was cool. It was a good ending. There are I did see in the accessibility menu, you can turn that timer off if you okay. want to just like go through it ease. I didn't because I kind of wanted to see if I could do it and I was making progress each time. And I, I like I said, I did it three times to get it right. Yeah. Um, but if if anyone just a heads up for anyone. Cool. OK. Yeah, that's awesome. OK, Um. Besides that, I played a game called My Friendly Neighborhood, which is basically a Bioshock type game, like an ambient nightmare type scenario where you play a a handyman who is sent to turn off a antenna in this old studio lot where they filmed a show called My Friendly Neighborhood, which is essentially Sesame Street in this universe. Oh, right. This one, the full game came out. I forgot. I played the demo. Yeah. And uh, the puppets are crazy and attack you and stuff. It's like a Resident Evil Bioshock type thing. It's a survival horror type thing. First person. Uh, it's With great. some like Five Nights of Freddy's in there? Is that, is no, that how they kind of do the... I wouldn't okay. say it's... It was definitely more like a Resident Evil 7. Like you are moving around and doing puzzles in first person. You have a gun. You can attack. And there's a big lady that'll like step on you and she's she's hot. <laughs> Well, there is a big lady of certs that's like a big bird, I guess, type character, but... Okay, so really hot, got she, it. She will step on you, I guess, if you get too close, so that's... Yeah, it's... Man, you remember that episode on your type where he did that? What's that? Remember that episode of Sesame Street where he just stepped on that kid? That's why they're off the air now, yeah. I... <laughs> that's what that documentary is all about. Yeah. <laughs> I need to watch that documentary. I hear it as a tearjerker. I have not. No, <laughs> I I probably won't either. But I don't I don't care enough about the thing. But because it was like the same dude at all times, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Actually, this is totally tangential. Did you hear yeah. that Ryan Reynolds is bringing Alf back to his I streaming didn't. service? I did not yes. hear that. <laughs> He, he has Ryan a Reynolds also working on biker mice from Mars. Like he's apparently doing a bunch of things. The hell's going on? That's great. I didn't. I didn't realize he had a, his own streaming service, but he's going to start. <clears throat> he's bringing Alf back. They, the guy who does Alf is coming back. I guess there's no way you can do one without the other. He's like, he will take this puppet off of my cold dead hand. So that's great. <laughs> um, and I was so I was reading into it. I'm like, okay. are they making new Alf? They're, they're going to air reruns of the show. Yeah. But there is technically going to be new Alf content because Alf will show up and do ads for mint oh, no. mobile and oh, no. <laughs> the, the, so so if if alf hawking dick pills was on your bingo card for 2023 you can scratch that off baby <laughs> it, i can say it wasn't on mine <laughs> that's wild holy crap <laughs> the more you know yeah uh, this is not like anything like that. Again, this is very much like a Bioshock. Then what the fuck? What are we something. talking about? Uh, we're talking about My Friendly the Neighborhood. <laughs> it's the one where you have the, the typewriter gun that shoots random letters. Yeah, so all your weapons revolve around writing, which is kind of apropos with the writer strike, I suppose. Your main handgun is just like shoots letters. You get a shotgun later that shoots like a full script, essentially. Uh, it's kind of cute and fun. There is a horror element to this, but I wouldn't say it's really, like, horrific or scary. There's some times where it's just like, oh, fuck that puppet. Like, I'm not going near that thing. That thing is messed up or whatever, but it's pretty, it's pretty tame, all things considered. I think it's very good, too. It's just a really fun six-hour jaunt through, like, a horrific Sesame Street scenario. <laughs> I'm amazed I got six hours out of six hours out of that. Like when I played the demo, I'm like, man, I don't know what else you're really gonna do in this. Yeah, 
I watched a speed run of it, and that's like half an hour long. So like when you know how to get through it, it's quick. So yeah. <laughs> uh. So, but yeah, I think it's worth checking out if you like uh survival horror type stuff. It's fun, and uh, I was pretty surprised by it. And the final thing I played is entitled yeah you want those games right so here you go now let's see you clear them i played this too i played it on this, stream this is yeah. there's a pedigree to the developer right what is it again they're the ones that ported the katamari games onto yes. switch yeah it's oh, okay. the katamari yeah that's true <clears throat> and it's okay yeah so describe what these are because it's pretty goofy so if you've ever been on a social media platform usually like reels or tiktok or shorts or whatever on youtube some you usually get ads or a sponsored like sh sponsored videos or whatever of like a game where you're playing a stick man or a floating head or a gun or something like that and you have to do various things and then you click on it and that game isn't actually nothing like what you saw well this is a game that is a bunch well, of those hang on because sometimes i get ads where they they sit, tell me you know those games are never like it well this is the actual fun one so i'm assuming that one's not lying to me I mean, Finally. You can try. <laughs> you can try. This is a, a mini game collection of all of those games that like get you into their weird malware uh, app or whatever, but as one just giant collection of a bunch of levels. Are you telling me the girl doesn't want to please me, the Lord? <laughs> yeah. Sadly. What? Yeah. I hate to tell you this, John. I get all the ads mention that. <laughs> so Come play, my lord. Yeah, the, um, exactly. the main one, there's only like five of them, I think. The main games are... There are only five, yeah. The one where you are a stick man and there is a treasure and usually a monster or a thing and you have to pull pins to like release part of the levels bit by bit. Okay, yeah, that's the one that said it was actually fun. Yeah, yeah. okay. So that one apparently doesn't exist the way that there, it's ever shown. I've never tried to download it, but I've seen comments and stuff saying like this I is... Mean, malware <laughs> i bet you there is at least one million youtube videos titled i actually tried the phone ad game probably and here's what it was yeah yeah probably <clears throat> um so that's probably one of the more recognizable ones that's like the kind of default one that like your cursor starts on when you load the game up um what How other ones the are one mm -hmm. where there's like like hot singles in my area is that one any no, good that one that's not, not usually a game yeah <laughs> you god damn right that's, that's, like like that's real life <laughs> how do they always know where i am <laughs> i don't know I, because they're, they're tracking, in your area they're, they're, they're following phone. you around yeah following, yeah <laughs> your phone is a hot the hot babe in your area so tracking. when they're recreating these games are they making them fun I mean, these I games mean, they are, are the same game. They're fun. Yeah, it's just that they exist now and you only pay one price for like a hundred of them. So and they're basically all puzzle games. So they're, they're like puzzle games. you got to like puzzle games. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, then you're in luck. There's the one with like a bunch of vials of uh, different like sands or liquids of different colors that you have to kind of like mix and match into one. Yeah, sort each. sort the fluids. Yeah, the sorting Ugh. fluids. Um, there's, there's the one where you're walking down a path and you have to pick up money and use the money to build stairs. That's to, actually uh, my favorite one. That's the best that one. That one's a little silly, yeah. And it gets weirdly difficult by the end. They all do, to be fair. But, well, cause I, I, yeah, I, we did a bunch and then we had unlocked all of them on stream. So we went to do yeah. the final difficulty stage. And then suddenly like there was like multipliers and dividers and everything. We're like, what the fuck is happening? There's like, that oh, tower. Go one. to this gate to get yeah. the, the vaccine and that'll give you triple the amount of money. But like <laughs> you'll have a 20 percent chance of losing all your money. I'm like, what is happening here? So that game in particular is really funny because at some point they add RNG into it where you have two gates. And uh, the first one, I think, is you can study or you can go to the casino. And if you go to the casino, yep. there's a 50 50 chance that you'll get rich or uh, you'll lose a bunch of money or whatever. But if you study, you always get a little bit of money. And there's, there becomes this weird meta That's narrative life, man. playing that game where if you want the three stars to complete the level, you have to do the shitty, risky RNG stuff at least once and then, like, don't fail after that. 
but you can be every level doing the normal path of going to work, going to school, taking the vaccine or whatever. Like, it's really, really <laughs> funny how at some point there's this weird, like, sociopolitical narrative of you can get through life like normally or you could risk it all and become a baller baby by the end. I mean, yeah that's that's literally how it works yeah my favorite is when they introduce um work or rob where you could like rob a bank or a convenience store or something and that has a 35 percent chance of working but if it does wow. you're on easy street baby <laughs> it's good to go after okay. that <laughs> all right yeah um what are the other games there's like this tower math one of you have to pick the big you have a number and you can attack and win other dudes with like a lower number than you and when you attack them you will increase your number by that amount so if you have five say at the beginning you can attack a one two three or four and then if you attack like the three or whatever you'll now become eight and you'll like kind of get like bigger and bigger and that adds a math component of there will be things that will multiply your number and divide it or minus it or whatever uh that's boring though because it's there's a slow animation every move you make that you have to wait through if you're yep. attacking a which square. counts for your timer for the three star rank. it sucks too. it's that's probably one yep. of my least favorite ones until i played the car game the parking lot where you have to shuffle cars it out <laughs> yeah, it's traffic jam if you're familiar with that old puzzle traffic jam is that is that the one where you have to like get like the red car out of the square yeah in this case I you like, have to get all the cars all out. the cars out but can't they only go like in one direction yeah, they can only yes. go forward and backwards yes exactly so there must be more than one exit then yeah oh, okay yeah but this one introduces pedestrians that are walking back and forth and if yep. you hit them you fail the puzzle they call okay, them baddies what? <laughs> in this but yes i don't know why uh and maybe more importantly they introduce a <clears throat> sound for the car honking every fucking move you make <laughs> my favorite is when you crash the car into another car and the game's like yeah that's fine keep going yeah that's fine but if you touch a baddie then they stab you i guess because they have knives they're carrying they stab the car i get or you in the car or something <laughs> yeah a really sharp knife <laughs> Yeah, it's a really sharp knife. Roll down your window. Okay. Fair is fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's all of them, right? I'm pretty There's sure. There's only five, yeah. There's only those five. Uh, I think this is amazing, though. Like, I really loved... I played three hours of this, and I still have a few more to go. <laughs> yeah. And then when you beat all the modes, I think you unlock, like, an infinite mode where you can just do them. Like, Forever. they randomly generate them. There's, like, a challenge mode. Do you get there's a gotcha machine you can use that yep. lets you unlock new titles for some reason, but I don't think there's an online leaderboard unless that's for the other mode. There is a leaderboard, but yeah, I don't know if it's online either, to be honest with you. There is a weird thing where that unlocks that's like a challenge mode where you can challenge the level types on easy or hard. They give you, I'm guessing, a randomly generated version of it. You have to complete three in a row, and it'll take your score from that and post it on a leaderboard, I think is how it works. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't get to that point. I didn't bother with any of that stuff either, really. Um, but, there, yeah, I don't know. I think it's really fun, and more importantly, I love that fact that the title is, yeah, you want those games, right? So here you go. Let's see you clear them. It's a great title. Yeah, right. there's still some mobile ad games that weren't in there, so I'm hoping they do a sequel or a do DLC. And rumor has it that the studio that does this normally does sequels. Yeah, I think it's just a great idea too. Like, what a great idea for a game! All those weird things that get you to click on a thing that isn't what the actual game is. Just put those together. Why not? Probably took like a month to code everything and then get it out. Yeah, I, I think it's cool. That's really all I've been playing, though. John, anything you want to touch on? Nope, everything I've been playing has been on stream, which is which has pretty much been it. So we played a little bit of Tears of Kingdom on stream. We finished Spyro 1. Oh, I think we talked about this. I played everybody 1-2 Switch. We did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it came up again on stream. People kept wanting it. So I've, in fact, played it three separate times on stream now. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. That sucks. We we found something interesting. Okay. Uh turns out, you know that a hundred player mode? Uh 
Is sometimes the red, you light, still green, need light one. No, just they're like they're, the mode you can play with phones supports up to 100 players. Yeah. Uh, they still expect you to have Joy Cons nearby for some of those games. Oh, so uh, some mini games we could not play online. I literally had to do all the Joy Con controls while like there was one where it was ninjas, so like uh, people were throwing shurikens off their phones, but someone had to be there with the Joy Cons like swinging to block them. And turns oh. out. Uh, if you're playing online, the only per the person who's at home has to do all that for both teams. So how would that, that was fun. so someone's someone's like watching you that the, you know they're connected to the website or with their phone. How how are they supposed to connect a Joy-Con to like to what? So here's the thing: Nintendo didn't expect people to actually play this game online with yeah. streamers. With yeah, streamers. They, they streamers thought this was this. just for yeah. This was just for people who happened to be in a room of a hundred people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is wild. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, uh, somehow but this well, game on, is... But even in that scenario, if you were doing it locally, can't you only connect like eight Joy-Cons to a Switch? Yeah, yeah. Well, the here's the thing. The modes that use both the phone and the Joy-Cons, they only use like one or two Joy-Cons at the most. So Okay, so you they're only expecting at most like eight people? Yeah. To have joy Okay. But, um... The wild thing is there there's like 50 mini games in there, but to unlock them, they somehow did a worse job than Mario Party, where you get a wheel that spins around that has four games on it and they don't remove games you've played before. So uh, there was one right. round. We've played this game three times. One round, literally every mini game, but one was an old one. And then they kept adding more that we had done before. We've probably unlocked nine games total on this game of three different times playing it. Yeah, it that's is, infuriating. It is like, infuriating. I mean, it was described as miserable. Yeah, <laughs> I can see why. There's definitely some very miserable aspects to this. It's it's fun for like a stupid ass like thing to play with my, my viewers and stuff like that. But like there's so much like why who thought this was a good idea like give, why, give it a score why do i have to keep doing this for one of the mini games over and over but it's not quite reading the motions right so like i have to keep doing it better in time it's just oh so dumb give it a score out of 10 like a four higher than <laughs> i would have expected okay I've still had some laughs. There's been some genuine laughs from playing this. Do you think that your score would be higher or lower if you didn't have the audience you do? Like oh, it would be way lower. It would way absolutely lower? be lower. Okay. My uh, Playing with my audience and just being able to fill a room of 100 people with this silly-ass game, that's what makes it. I am somehow the target audience for this, for the other mode, and yeah, even then, it's I'm clearly not the target audience. It's wild. Okay. Uh, I got a couple more games to talk about. Oxenfree 2 I've been playing. That was kind of one of my main games uh, while I was traveling. I've been playing it on my excuse me, uh, iPad. Um, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. However, I don't remember a single thing about Oxenfree 1 other than like radio ghosts um, and teenagers. I kind of wish there was like a previous on, previously on Oxenfree little short the beginning but there's not so they'll you know they're naming characters they're introducing characters and i'm constantly being like was this one of the teens last time because you're you're playing a character that was not in oxen free one mm -hmm. you have a companion character that's not in oxen free one but there are like teenagers that you're running into but i just don't remember because oxen free one came out like eight years ago yeah um which is pretty pretty long so yeah i was gonna ask if not, this was like a direct follow-up or kind of how they do that but it's probably I mean, it's the same remember. island, the same kind of like radio ghost stuff is happening. So it is a follow up, but yeah. you're playing a brand new character that comes to the island yeah. and okay. comes to the area and, and doing stuff. So <clears throat> that's why I wish there was just a real quick like, here's a recap of some things that would be useful for you to remember. Yeah. Um, Because even though like I'm still enjoying myself and the, the kind of core story is about this new character and, and kind of their baggage. So, you know, that doesn't require any kind of previous knowledge. Yeah. I'm just wondering if if I would be kind of getting a bit more out of it if they had just clued me in on a few other things from the past. Sure, um, yeah. But it's still good. You still get like a fun little radio where you can check the different frequencies. And sometimes there's just like a high school talk show 
going on and you can listen to that while you're walking around. <clears throat> the the dialogue is I feel like Night School Studios is like strong suit with all of their games. Um and you know, in Oxen Free One they did a really good job of writing teenagers. Now you you're the the two main characters, they they feel like they're kind of more in their like mid to late twenties, like more adult figures. <clears throat> okay. And those they sound good as well. And they do the nice writ- written thing of like like God of War has this where if something cuts off you know, a conversation, the person will come back and be like, oh, wait, what were we talking about? It was something about the ladders. Oh, yeah. And then they'll get back into it. Th- that's great when it works. I've noticed a few times, though, I'll cut off some conversations because there's things that will trigger based on where I've walked. Like, you got close oh. enough to this cave. The secondary person would say, ah! that's Sorry. The secondary person has to comment on the cave that'll cut some stuff off and it could be stuff like that i was listening to on the radio and then i'll miss out on that stuff or i'll go back to it later and they'll repeat that one without any kind of acknowledgement so it's like they did the kind of acknowledgement stuff for some things but not everything so it's kind of forced me to get in the habit of like okay cool someone is talking to me about something right now i'm going to stand still I don't want to move anywhere where I'm supposed to go because I might trigger an interruption. And this game has proven that it is not reliable enough to handle that situation, which is a bummer because this game requires a lot of like walking around a pretty sizable map slowly because you're just on foot. You're climbing up the rocks slowly to get to higher ground, stuff like that. Like you're not running at any point. Um, So, yeah, it's a bit of a double edged sword in that regard, but. Um, I, you know, I like the vibes and the, and the themes of Oxen Free, and I basically got this one for free because it's on Netflix. Yeah. Um, on everything except Xbox, which is weird. <laughs> oh. uh, so anyway, yeah, Oxen Free 2. And last is I'm playing Pikmin. It transferred over my save data from the demo, and I'm playing the full game now. I played the night mode, which is new. You get to go out at night, and it's basically like a tower defense horde mode. Okay. Uh, oh, that sounds interesting. I've only done the first one, which was as pretty much as bare bones as you could expect. They sent some enemies at me. I walked over to them, threw the glow Pikmin at them, killed the enemy, walked to the other side and went back and forth for like six minutes. So I'm hoping they introduce some more mechanics. But then again, Pikmin's not really known for like building structures. So I don't know if there's going to be any kind of like build a turret, build a, a fence or anything like that. I'd I'd be kind of surprised. Uh, Pikmin's usually more on the chill side, but we'll see. Like I guess I've only done the first one, and it was fine. <clears throat> what is cool though is you're kind of like building a, a home base in between these expeditions you go out on, because you're finding a bunch of stranded explorers and other whatever species you are, Olimar folk, uh, and you're mm-hmm. finding them all over the place, and you're bringing them back, and they're like, oh hey, I'm you know I'm the hairstylist, so I can change your hair, or hey, I'm the one that'll upgrade your dog, I'm the one that'll can you keep finding more treasures? If you find 50 of them, I'll give you a reward and stuff like that. So you're kind of making a home base, which is kind of cool. I'm enjoying it. It's chill. It's Pikmin. Um, this one's runtime is like three times as long as every other Pikmin because they're usually always around like eight hours. This one's like 30. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there is stuff to do in this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, it's good. I like it. I think it looks pretty nice as well. So that's cool. Well, let's do some news. All right. First off, a couple of these are are from uh, last week when I wasn't here that you guys didn't touch on, and I wanted to talk to you about Major Nelson retiring after like 22 years at Xbox. Oh right, I forgot that he was doing that. That's oh. so weird. He's like he's been such a figurehead of that place. Yeah, he was like the guy. Um, Interesting. Hmm. For those who don't know, I'm curious. Do you think like anyone like kind of Gen Z? No. They don't care. Had no. Knows no. Major Nelson. Yeah. Really? It was like, yeah, like he stopped being a front head at like after Xbox 360, didn't he? Like he wasn't really that featured in Xbox One. I mean, he was still doing stuff like he had like an Xbox official podcast he was doing there as well. He did show up on live streams even to this day. Uh, he wasn't like the main guy, uh, it seemed like, but um for those who don't know, because I'm sure that we have a bunch of listeners who don't know, he was he was kind of like the first. This is just this is what I was just kind of hearing from from a lot of people. Um, is is they kind of regarded Major Nelson as the first almost like brand ambassador, like public face that was going to talk about 
from like an advertisement standpoint what this company is doing i could see that um and he, and he did that for for Xbox. Larry Herb was his real name, and then his you know his online persona was Major Nelson. That was his gamer tag as well. <clears throat> and he came about um, on, the, on the original Xbox, uh, and then yeah, definitely went into the 360, and w- was still going. He was still doing stuff, and now he's retiring. He's moving on from Xbox and Microsoft. It sounds like all he's really said is the next chapter of his career. But it has been 22 years. Uh, just kind of interesting to see, like, of course it was going to happen one day, but yeah, he was just kind of like a, a real figurehead for sure. So, good luck to Major Nelson. Yeah, yeah hopefully he's hopefully he's got something good planned, no, no matter what he ends up doing. PlayStation's Project Q, that streaming handheld, has leaked. You have yeah. some footage of it in practice. The footage of, like, the home screen and stuff, I feel like it looks super dev- like, I cannot imagine yeah. this is going to be final. Um, but in practice, in real life, now that we're kind of seeing it in action, this thing looks so goofy with the controllers. It looks bad, oh I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the nice thing about the, the Switch and, and the Steam Deck to some extent is they're, like, flush with the screen. Yeah. Whereas this really looks like they snapped a PlayStation oh, controller in half. And strapped it on the side, like the gaps there for, for, for I guess for your fingers. Yeah, it's also and the, the fact, analog sticks look weird. It's the fact that the like holding area for the analog sticks overlap on the screen border. Like it's stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah. on the it's on the bezel. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I, I can't for, imagine they're going to change much because this is supposed to come out later this year, right? There's only so much time. It feels like. Could you do a hardware revision? I don't know. I don't. Is it too soon? I would have to assume they're already manufacturing these. Oh, good. If it's coming out this year, absolutely. Yeah, and all that might be getting updated now is more of a software thing. This looks super breakable too. <laughs> yeah, no, I hate this. It looks so bad. Um, the the leak comes from a Twitter account called Zuby underscore Tech. Um, they don't really talk about it all that much, but they just show some some various UI swiping around. Obviously, it has a touch screen, so they can touch some of that. Again, the it definitely looks like kind of a dev mode. It doesn't look like any kind of uh, PlayStation user interface on the console side that we've seen, so I'd have to assume that's going to get updated. Yeah. But yeah, weird. Yep. Um, speaking of controllers, Xbox has announced a pizza scented controller in partnership with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles what? movie Wait. that's coming out. Yeah, it's got a it's, it's got a like a little <laughs> pizza scented thing you clip onto the back of it that just makes your hand and the controller smell like pizza. Well, that's disgusting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it yeah, like you said, it doesn't. It, they didn't really talk or show how that pizza part connects to it. Uh-huh. Let's see, I have an Xbox controller here. I'm not sure how that would work unless it It might there like there's like it... a little there's a little <clears throat> tiny thing on the bottom there. Underneath so maybe the... like, Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like there's like a little a tiny hole there. So you might be able to clip it in through there or and, and like move like the battery pack here. Yeah, I wonder I wonder if it's a scenario where you take the batteries out as well so that it has more than just that to hold on to. Because it doesn't look like it's wrapping around in any way and clipping to the front. It almost looks like one of those like hand warmer things. You're just holding it. That's what it kind of looked like to me. For people that it watch makes me the think of video, the. Um... I posted a picture of it on the live thing, so you can see somebody sniffing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it, it makes picture. me think of the uh, the Dreamcast. Um, what was that thing? VU F M V U. What was that? The yeah, the VMU. Plugged in? VMU. Yeah. VMU. Yeah. Kind of makes me think that where it kind of sticks out a little bit near the sure. top back of it. But yeah, but at least that goes inside like the front of the controller. Theoretically, this could attach to any Xbox controller because those control unless those controllers have something unique to them. So you could get like an you know like a third party or an aftermarket pizza add-on. Let, or... let me add it on to that furry controller they made for like Sonic Two. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god, the ultimate ad. Uh, there is another picture down below in that second set that shows more of the pizza thing. 
and there's like a button on the top of it. Do you think that like sends that's what that's what gives scent? out the pizza smell? Yeah, it's so like a, just think... a Glade plug-in. That's all oh, it is. What do you yeah. think that little white circle is on top of the pepperoni? I need to look at the full picture. Do you think right that's now. where the scent comes from? Like you press the button and it shoots out towards your face. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I guess totally. So. It, it, like it's out of kind of like a like perfume that. thing. Oh, I bet you like uh, looking at this, it does actually look like a Glade plug-in. Like yeah. where like that's how you know if it's out of the smell. Oh, I my bet you that's what it is. Mom, mom, my controller's out of the smell again. I'm out of pizza smell, mom. So gross. Anyway, I think you can only like enter a sweepstakes to get to buy one of these. Um, Mommy, you win it, I thought. Sorry, sorry. Enter a sweepstakes to win one of these. That, that's what I meant. Sorry. Um, anyway, that movie looks good. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. does. There's there's four controllers, one for each uh, turtle. By the way. Okay. Okay. That's I'm assuming. Sure. I'm assuming one pizza scent though. I'm I'm sure it's all pepperoni scent, or just probably yeah. cheese scent. Uh, last little bit. Niantic has announced a Monster Hunter game. It's coming out September 14th. Monster Hunter Now. Paul as the Monster Hunter of uh -huh. the group. Yeah. Are you excited for some ARG? location-based hunting. No. Okay. Didn't they, didn't they just fire a bunch of people? Yeah, I think this <laughs> is their Hail Mary to stay relevant, probably. Or they they were working on this for a while and it had to come out is probably... Hey, they still got thing. Pikmin Bloom coming. You get If you play through the demo of Pikmin 4, you get an in-game item in Bloom. Okay. Thank God. What is the item? I don't know. I'm not going to open up Pikmin Bloom. No. Who, what are you, who are you talking to? Sean, you're the person who walks the most out of the three of us. I really thought you'd be the biggest bloomer here. They don't even have yeah. my main weapon in here. Fuck this game. Who cares? What's your main weapon? I don't. I don't know anything really about this game. I, I like to main switch axe, and they have sword and shield, great sword, long sword, hammer, light bow gun, and bow are the only weapons this game has. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> but if you pre-order it now, you can like start getting some like in-game items. They need people to pre-order it. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably try it out, because why wouldn't I? But, like, I'm not excited for it. Okay, well, you'll uh, you'll have to report back. For sure, yeah. Let's do some questions. If you would like to send a question in, it's topdownperspective at gmail.com. At TDP Podcast on X. Yep. Oh, great. God, don't remind me. Yep. The Discord channel or John's P.O. Box are all great ways to send a question in. But first, we have episode titles. I was wondering if you would say Twitter or X. Yeah, I was wondering that. Yeah, good call. Oh my god. Okay, so episode titles. There's three for the first one. Uh, what? It's one per. You only get one title. Yeah. This is. Oh, well, maybe it was just Lord. a really good episode. <laughs> They're all really of good the episodes. top down perspective. <laughs> 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 one for each of us. One for each of us. Yeah. Okay. May twenty fifth. Um. Okay, I'm going to take this title. This is Alternative okay. Title 2. I think that's a great way to get your dick ripped off. <laughs> Ooh, okay, there's a lot of those. That's um, the funnier one out of the three. <laughs> okay. I don't remember if I was back yet for this one. What, what was the date again? This was May 25th. I might have been... Oh, no, I was back for this one, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. That seems like something I would say, though. Yeah, I think so, too. I don't know what I was talking about, though, other than dicks. <laughs> I don't remember either. The context was, a question came up asking what power from any media would the host choose to have in order to activate it? The user has to be completely naked. Oh, yeah. Oh, <clears throat> wow. I think we're talking about flight, right? <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's <laughs> what it was. <laughs> oh, God. See, now he I remembers. Definitely was, I was not here for this episode. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember you being there. Uh, the first alternative title was, Hey, I'm over here behind the door. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm going to walk out slowly and let you shoot me. And the main <laughs> title was, If none of my jokes land today, it's on purpose. Okay, I remember that one. What? You do? Oh, yeah, because Paul, you were saying something was like messed up with your rib or something like that. 
and laughing oh. makes you hurt, hurts you. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, I'll tone it down with the joke. So if they're not landing, it's because of that. I just checked it. You're right. That's exactly yep. what it was. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. It's very F considerate of you, Sean. Fuck yeah, it. No, no worries. What is the, hey, I'm over here. I'm behind the door. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm going to walk out slowly and let you shoot me. No idea. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> Okay, what it was that? Alan Wake 2. You're playing Rainbow Six? Oh, Alan Wake. Oh, this must have been me saying, like, yeah. it's scary. Can't they all just say that to me so that I don't get scared? <laughs> that, that's, exactly, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, okay. Okay, I was, I was curious, but I still think the one I chose was the funnier of the three. But that one's pretty funny context-wise. Uh, June 1st. I look so fucking awesome in the that photo. It's the one that I need to put on the Switch, 100%. Yep, absolutely, yep. absolutely. In response to a past question regarding the host putting a photo of the other one on their face, but yeah, okay, it's that. Uh, Which June, that, is, that is still here on my desk, so. <laughs> June 8th, welcome to the big leagues, yo. What? I don't what remember. was the dating on? June this is another one I was 8th. gone for, so I wasn't here. I was driving across the country. In June 8th? Okay. June 8th? I don't think I was here either. Oh, so this must have been you and Nathan, because I was at Summer oh, Game Fest. Then I don't remember. So the context was... A question came up for best and worst introductory games for different video game genres. Among his answers, Nathan mentioned this as a joke genre for difficult games with examples like Super Meat Boy. Okay. I don't remember that at all, but yeah, okay. Uh, June fifteenth, we will rock you. This is when you know we're talking about Summer Game Fest a bunch, but no. Was I've there never... anything Queen related during Summer Game Fest? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> no idea. Okay, I just looked up the context. Uh, a question came up asking what a possible Legend of Zelda movie would be about, along with its cast. Oh, yeah. From a tweet, Sean mentioned yep. the possibility oh. of The Rock voicing a Goron while they mine in rhythm to this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got that from Twitter, to be fair, but it's still, there's no way that doesn't happen. It's too real. Yeah. Uh, June 22nd. I know Bruce Lee, so that's fine. No, no idea. Okay. What about this? Alter like I would say. The alternative title for this one was I Hate Having Fun. This sucks. What about that one? That sounds like something Paul would say, but I don't know. All right. Context for I Know Bruce Lee. Uh, while discussing Super Mario RPG Remake announced in the recent Nintendo Direct, Sean mentioned... This would give him the opportunity to finally play the game. John was concerned about the adaptation considering dated pop Losing culture references. references such as this one and Peach having a vibrator. Sean assured him confidently he knew that what those were and that Peach should not lose the vibrator for her own game. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, still still feel that way. Uh, I Hate Having <clears throat> Fun is uh, a sequel to The Quiet Man came out and if it was actually good. <laughs> uh june 29th it's not the biggest it's the greatest stampede. talking about the stampede yeah you're right uh context yeah that's exactly what it was oh wait uh concluding tdp was a number one non-pornographic podcast that's right <laughs> okay what about <laughs> this one alternative title for the record i'm not a foot pervert i know that's sean saying yeah. that but i, I don't remember answer. why were you, oh you were playing jury in street fighter 6 yep that's what it was uh yes you were right that's what it was okay july 6 a skeleton wearing a skin a skeleton wearing a skin i think i said this <laughs> wait what about what i don't know what i was talking about though i think i said this though a skeleton wearing a skin Okay, I just looked up the context. I don't... Yeah. What is it? Uh, Latest Indiana Jones movie. 
Oh, because Harrison Ford oh. looks like a skeleton wearing skin. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, July 13th. Do you clean David Hasselhoff? I know what this is. Okay. We're talking about the uh, Power Wash Simulator yep. DLC that was SpongeBob. For SpongeBob. Yep, that's what it is. Okay, alternative title. I can only imagine people buying this game are doing it on accident. Every one, one two, switch? Uh, yes. That's what it was. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you again for writing those in. Uh, the source question, a hive a. If you had to change your name to that of a fictional character, what would it be? And what are the pros and cons of living with your new name, given the world we live in? Dante, I guess. I don't know. You Really? Because I was going to say, I would still pick a fictional character with a normal name. Yeah, well, Dante's a normal name. See, I was thinking, like, Duke Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> Just going completely right. stupid with it. So what's the problem? I am Captain Paul? Planet now. Uh, the, I mean, the pro is that I'm super forgettable and nobody will remember. <laughs> hey, hey, I Can will fight for Duke Nukem. And then the, co the con is that the type of people that would want to like hang out with you when your name is Duke Nukem might not be the coolest people. To hang if, out I, with. if I didn't know the like that it's a game character and I met someone named Duke Nukem, I would yeah. immediately ask if they do porn. <laughs> Wasn't he that also the name of like the uh, that was a villain in Captain Planet? Yeah, Captain yeah. Planet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it was spelled like one letter was different. It's like N U K U M. But it was otherwise, yeah, they, phonetically the same. Yeah. Yeah, I just went dumb with it because I could probably find a fictional Paul and then, like, nothing changes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. I just thought, like, Dante, because I'm like, all right, I like the name. I like the character. Yeah. The pro is that it's just a normal sounding name. The con is that people probably quote clerks at me all the time. They'll be like, 37 dicks in a row? <laughs> over, over and over. Well, depending who you know, you might just get that all the time anyway. Not True. saying any names. As a kid, I wanted to change my name to Gage. Thank God that never happened, because <laughs> fuck that. Okay. What's, what's the pro and con of that? There's no pros. <laughs> the con is that's stupid as hell. Pick the bad time to take a drink. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to all the Gages that listen. <laughs> oh, no. Well, there's our next quote. There's the next out of context quote. Yeah. All right, Dad writes. This is from last week, actually. I just pulled it because okay. this is like a Sean and me question more than it is a sure. Sean and me. Dad wrote, uh, how would you have improved Ted Lasso season two and three? You've been sitting with the question. Do you have thoughts? <sighs> Not really. I probably wouldn't have made them. I thought Ted Lasso one was <clears throat> the first season was good enough. I didn't need a follow up. I think... I think you needed like an like a real antagonist. This is more of an issue in two than three. There's there's kind of no antagonist in the second season. More directive um, in three would have been nice, maybe. Like, it felt I think the better. the kind of the end of the arc with Nate almost makes no sense in three. And, and it's last minute more... too. <clears throat> there are also characters in that show, like Nate's girlfriend, that just completely disappear. Um uh, Keely's girlfriend completely disappears. <laughs> Keely has nothing to do in season three. Um, yeah. The the show feels like it was so successful that Apple rushed it out, and they yeah. were like, "We need the next season. Let's go. Write yourself a check. Just make sure there's another season." And it feels rushed. And I wish they could have just sat with it for like longer to to come up with better ideas. What did you like? Two or three more out of those two. I think I liked th it's hard because it's been a while since I've seen two. I think I, I remember really not liking two. So I want to say three, but there were parts of three where I was like, did I ever like this show? Yeah, I definitely felt the same with three. The problem with three is that they had so many characters and I think they felt like every character had to have something to do when realistically they everything with Keeley was garbage. Like it, you could have thrown that all away, spent more time building with 
Nate, like, redemption or whatever you want to do with him. Like, they, yeah, they wasted too much time, I think, with garbage that didn't matter. There was still I mean, some I, good I, stuff, though. I like those other characters, and part of me thinks that they were building up those characters, because I would not be surprised if we get an announcement that, hey, a first episode of, of Richmond AFC is coming, totally. and it's everyone you liked except Ted, because his arc is gone. Totally. But 99% of the other people are here. Like, that, that makes too much sense, so... Yeah, totally. I don't know. Uh, and the Beat says, What are your favorite non-gaming-related things you did on any console you own? Example, one of mine was watching YouTube on my Wii U gamepad's browser. <clears throat> hmm. I did a lot of MSN Messenger, <laughs> like chat room, stuff with friends on the PSP. Oh, okay. Does hacking my PSP count? Because I guess that. <laughs> as long as you did it, it did non-gaming stuff with it. Did you hack it to mm. do something other than games? No, no, I hacked it oh. to play Cave Story. A good game. Uh, I the Wii had a voting channel where every week they would let you vote in a poll. <laughs> yeah. Everybody votes. I mean, mine's basic. PlayStation 2 was like the, our first real DVD player. So like sure. watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be watching a movie. I use my PS4 as a Blu-ray player. I use my PS2 as a disc as a DVD player. Well, yeah, yeah the PS3, wasn't that the like first... It yeah, did Blu-rays, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm just saying, like, too. I use my PS4 as a Blu-ray player, like, today. I, I was upstairs yeah. watching Blu-rays today on it, so. I mean, who has a dedicated Blu-ray player? <laughs> That's ridiculous. But I even remember years ago when I worked, like, at Best Buy over the summer, I would, mm. Blu-ray players on their own were expensive, and I would tell people, you should go buy a PS5, you'll save, like, $300. It plays Blu-rays. It's, it's kind of tangentially a game. But one of my favorite things with the 3DS was uh, street passing and sure. getting, yeah. up, getting yeah. the puzzle yeah. pieces and all that sort of stuff, especially con for yeah. conventions. I loved that shit. Absolutely. But in, along the same lines, like the 360, like one versus 100. Yeah. It was, like it's barely a game. Yeah. I didn't do very well in it, but it was just like the social aspect. Like this was so cool. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Sukasuga writes, if you had to get a video game related tattoo, what would you do? Uh... I would definitely pick some kind of like logo or kind of icon graphical thing. Yeah. So you couldn't exactly tell. Like I probably wouldn't I wouldn't get like a character. You know, something something like a Triforce, but I would want it to be a lot less recognizable than the Triforce. Yeah, I would be down for a Triforce if I had to get like a recognizable video game thing. But I think I'm with you on that. I would get something that like has more meaning than just like this is a thing. Like I wouldn't get like Mario's cap or something <laughs> super recognizable if I could help it. I, I've thought about this one before because, like, my wife gets tattoos, so I thought about, like, what would I get as a tattoo? Yeah. And, like, the answer was, like, I nothing really I like enough to stay on there, but, like, yeah. I thought about, like, getting, like, a little kind of charm bracelet kind of thing around my wrist where I could put, like, little, like, game icons or stuff like that on it for things I like, like, you know, like Ninja Gaiden thing or, like, an NES cartridge, little things like that. Or, like, uh, Dante's Sword Rebellion. Just, like, something okay. like that. Like, just, like, a just, like, as a sleeve or, like, on a on a forearm there. That's about it. I definitely wouldn't be opposed to getting a Triforce, honestly. Part of me is also just like, I don't think there's like a specific game that means enough to me where I'd want it to represent that game or that series. That's so fair. I would mm -hmm. want, to, I would try and lean more towards like, what is something that would represent the activity more? Sure, okay. That and makes sense. nothing specifically comes to mind, but something around the idea of like, a game controller or the power button, but like not th those are lame, yeah. but no, those, just you. kind of in that ballpark. Sure. 
Uh, no more Spiro's rights. <laughs> At what point does a cowboy become a cow man? <laughs> oh, it's one of the dumbest questions we've had in a while, and I love it so much. <laughs> Well, would you have an answer? No, I don't. That's the best part. <laughs> it's wrong that the first thing that came to my mind was when he gets shot. Oh, wow. Yeah, all right, fair enough. I've watched a lot of westerns, man. It happens a lot. <laughs> when he first takes another man's life. Shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Yeah, I mean, when he sleeps with a cowgirl, I don't, <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a great answer here. All right, fair enough. Oh, my God. Uh, Hebrew Lantern says, complete this sentence. I don't like, insert, insert genre here, but I do like game or movie or TV show within that genre. Follow up, what makes you like that game, movie, or TV show? Okay. Uh, I don't like watching sports, but I like Ted Lasso season one because it's more about the characters and less about soccer or football. Okay. I'm trying to think of a genre I really don't like. I don't like simulation sports, but I do yeah. like Gran Turismo. Yeah. And why? And what? And why? You have to say why that one sticks out. Oh, uh, just because racing for some reason doesn't feel like simulation to me, despite, despite the fact that it very clearly is. And it's got that movie coming out? Oh, yeah, baby. Based on a real life story. Yep. Uh, I also don't like simulation sports, but I kind of have been waiting for and am excited for an NHL game to finally come out on PC because I like those generally because... I think hockey. You're Canadian. Wins. There's that. Yeah, I legally have to. Uh, yep. I think hockey just lends itself really nicely to basic, like one-on-one -on -one gameplay against somebody else or whatever. I don't like simulation sports, but I do like Rockstar's table tennis because ping pong is great. Sure. Yeah. I'll get it in whatever form I have to. Yeah. Genuinely forgot about that game. I don't like getting stranded in a plane crash on an island, but uh -huh. I like watching people get lost after they get stranded in a plane crash on a deserted island okay. um, because that show was great and it's one of my favorites. Have you revisited it like within the yeah. last bit? Oh, okay. I want to say like five, six years ago, I did a rewatch. Okay. I've never rewatched that show. How it holds up. Uh, Phantom Aegis writes, do you prefer ice cream or gelato? Gelato. Uh, my mouth prefers ice cream, but my stomach prefers gelato. <laughs> Good Fair. answer. I don't know enough of the difference, so I like them both. I have no preference. Gelato, I believe, has no dairy. I'm trying to remember. I feel like I'd have to try them like back to back to be like, okay, which one do I prefer? Let me quickly see here. Artisanal gelato in Italy generally contains six to nine percent butterfat, which is lower than other styles of frozen desserts. Oh, okay. Uh, gelato typically contains thirty-five percent air, substantially less than American style ice cream, and more flavoring than other kinds of frozen desserts, giving it a density and richness that distinguishes it from other ice creams. Okay, sure. Uh, final question from VGC Kenny. Pokemon Generation 10 is announced. It has a trailer. You think, okay, a Pokemon game. Click watch the trailer, but then you're stunned. You don't believe it. For Gen 10, uh, Game Freak decided the battle system will no longer be turn-based, but real-time. Is this acceptable? Is it too far removed from the heart and soul of Pokemon that the proverbial ship note is no longer of Theseus? They'll never do it for a mainline game without doing it as a side game first. I don't think they have the technical knowledge to do it because that last game ran like shit as turn-based. So <laughs> also that. 
I don't know. That I don't think they have the development time for it is the actual answer. Yeah, for sure. I'd be down for it. Like, I don't know. I'm a big fan of games trying something new. And if it fails, then the other stuff still exists. So who gives a shit? If, if you're going acceptable to me or acceptable to like the general audience, I don't think the general audience will accept it because the minute you change anything from Pokemon, it's the end of that person's actual world somehow. <laughs> The general um, audience won't like, accept anything Pokemon does ever. So, like, like they yeah. they just want they just want it to be like Madden games, where the same thing comes out every year with a new roster, because it is yeah. it is their comfort food, and they're not willing to like let it go and breathe. Yeah. I would like Pokemon to get as different as it as possible in every single totally. aspect. Um, I will never care that I will never care enough to get upset. Because there's a million other games I could be playing. I don't have to play it. Like Cassette Beasts. Like Cassette Beasts, which we're going to talk about shortly. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for writing in. If you want to send in questions for next week, it's topdownperspective at gmail.com, at TDP Podcast on Twitter, the Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. What is your game of the week? My Friendly Neighborhood. Yeah, you want those games, right? So here you go. Now let's see you clear them. Yes. And mine is... And mine is Viewfinder. Nice. Um, we didn't mention, forgot to mention earlier, but after this, we'll be going live for TDP Plus Cassette Beats, our final TDP Plus. Uh, so if you're one of those subscribers, come watch. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll be on the feed. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye, everybody.